That's it, use the pelvis. Use the pelvis. Okay. Okay. Pelvis break. I need a break. I need a break. I get anything on my eye again this time, I promise. <laughs> Ah, my eye. Miles better. I really like this car. I really, really, really do. Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. The 350 is here. I feel like I've started every single video with that same intro. But I'm not lying, the 350 is here. Today, we're carrying on for the last video. So, in the last episode, we went and got a, we actually got a locked diff of the 350 because this diff in here is. It's actually like dangerous drive. Went over this in a video of why these 350 dead diffs are dangerous. Um, in my opinion, actually dangerous and they're 100% terrible to drive with. I couldn't find the correct gear oil in the last episode because Halfords only did like part synthetic and I won't full synthetic because we're going to be putting the diff through a lot of uh, a bit more stress and obviously now it's locked as well. We want some good oil in there. So I've managed to order full synthetic 7590 and it's inside the car there. We just picked it up. So today we're going to be putting the diff back in and we're going to be doing something mega, 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 mega important and we've got brake discs and pads all the way around i've been putting pbs pads in my in every single car i've owned since the evo for like four or five years i've had pbs pads in every single car that i've owned unbelievable brake pads affordable the stopping power is amazing and they just last so much longer than other than their other competitors i've put other names in my cars and last like one track day i actually had a set of e a set of pads in my evo for three track days over a year and a half and they still didn't even look like worn down at all unbelievable pads every car i put pbs pads in so huge thank you pbs for something else about some some uh, pads for this i've actually got some like drilled discs and stuff so first of all let's get this diff in so we've got the diff here this is actually off a much lower mileage car as well. i've been told this is off like a 50,000 mile car but not only that this is a locked diff so we won't have that absolute dangerous unpredictability of the stock diffs um, so we had it sealed up, we, um, it's, been lit, it's been left for a couple of days to dry. Uh, we have got some of the correct oil, so we need to fill it up with oil as it's out the car and we need to put it back in the car. So let me pull it out because this bad boy is bloody heavy. So here's the diff and we've got the fill plug uh, just here. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill it up outside the car. I know it takes around 1.4 litres, so I've got two litres of this gear oil here. I'm going to put a litre in and then we're going to hold it flat and then obviously see if it's pouring out but it's even worse it's got this it's got a thing on the bottom which you jack up from so it's kind of hard to 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 put it flat so it's a 10 mil hex key so i'm just going to put it on its side and just pour it straight through there okay so it just it took around 1.5 liters um and when i put it flat it's just starting to pour out of this hole there so that's good so let's put that back up and let's get it back in the car okay i actually end up taking this diff out when it was like piss wet through the other day it was raining so hopefully this will be a little more fun we need to get the diff onto the jack so we can walk it under and then lift it up it's not going to be easy because it needs to come in and out at an angle so i'm not i'm not expecting this to be done in like two seconds but it's definitely going to be doable going to be lots of swear words, lots of shouting, lots of groans and lots of muscle pain but we can do this. So the trick to it is this thing sits in the bush there which again makes it a little bit difficult because you've kind of got to go forward and back but the issue is going forward is that the anti-roll bar is here and the front of that needs to go over the anti-roll bar so it needs to go over and then back so that's that's the difficult part so what i've done is i've put the front of the jack on the lift up bit so i hope that i can angle it over the anti-roll bar rest it on the anti-roll bar and then lift the back up and pull it back but i'm gonna need two hands okay guys the jack isn't working that stupid little bubbly thing on the bottom is just making it so as soon as you lift the jack up it just fucking falls off so I'm going old school I think it's the only way this is where I wish I weren't such a fat bastard I wish I had my abs that's it, use the pelvis use the pelvis oh okay okay okay, no pelvis break, I need a break, I need a break how far are we off? Miles, great. Are we near? Are we near? I can't see shit. Are we near? Is it working? Oh wait, that's good. Yep, that's good. 
Oh, this is scary. Round right top of my head. Good one, mate. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, that's a good rest point. Let's just rest there for a second. Ow. Okay, so once it was like sat on the exhaust and the anti roll bar, I've got the jack in. I pushed it up now. The thread is on there. So I'm just going to make sure you put the nut on there so it doesn't come out. Jack it up and then get the bolts through this bit here. I'm going to do them both properly tight all the way just so I make sure they're threading in nicely. So let's go around the other side. There's dirt under here. I ain't getting anything on my eye again this time, I promise. Ah, my eye. Okay, so the diff's all bolted up, so we just need to just do a reverse. Um, we need to bolt back up the, um, the anti-roll bar arms here. Um, and I don't know how we're going to do the one because the other nuts spin, span, so. Yeah, we might just have a not properly bolted anti-roll bar, but it's fine. Um, then we need to put the prop shaft back on, the drive shaft back on. And that's about it. That's about it, I think. Let me just make sure we plug this in. It's going to be the uh, ABS or maybe wheel speed sensor. I don't fucking know. Something to do with the diff, probably, which we don't need anymore. But anyway, we've got it. The prop bolts are on. This drive shaft on. This one's easier because the exhaust is in the way. We've got to do them ones, which take a little bit longer just because it's hard to get the span around the exhaust. Um, once that's up, we can then continue with the brakes. Yay! Oh, I forgot about the anti-roll bar things. Shit. Props on. Drive shafts are on. Diff pushes are on there tight. Anti-roll bar's back on as well. I think that... I think that's everything. So now we can get to doing the brakes. The brakes are the next worst thing on the car. Let's just do the brakes. Hopefully this won't be too bad. They are Brembo brakes. So doing Brembo brakes on the front is okay, provided the pins aren't like absolutely welded together which could possibly be the case so here they are pbs pads by far the best pads you can buy out there i believe uh, all like the civic cup cars use these and stuff so honestly the, i actually found a pbs from when i used to speak to a lot of uh, uh megan and and civic megan and cleo track boys they all ran these pads and ever since i found them out i've been using them ever since so my guys pbs I don't know what it is about these wheel nuts, but every single time you gun them off, they stick to the fucking socket. Honestly, so annoying. Like, watch this one. I bet you any money it does the same thing. Oh, shock. Fucking shock. So if you have got Brembo calipers, you'll be lucky enough because they are pretty much like probably one of the easiest uh, calipers to work on see these pins there all you got to do is just whack whack them through pull this little bit off there new pads in pins back through pretty simple but we are going to grease them up so okay on these brakes they have these little springs we don't want to lose them so i'm going to put them on there and the first of all you need to grab these and pull them away so that will just stop a lot of them a lot of the ones they just have like really tight pins and like just you whacking them in you know stops the pins going loose but these have these and then now these should be quite loose so you can either whack them from behind if you've got a tool um but they're seeing quite loose so these should be able to just wiggle these out this way careful because that spring might go flying so there we go pull the pins out now you're going to want to use the pads to push the pistons back in so you can get a screwdriver and the good thing is we're changing the pads and the disc so we can just really just get in there and scratch it up as long as we um it's a lot easier to do in the front because you can turn the wheel um but you want to just get a screwdriver in here and just pry back against the pad i'm gonna need a small screwdriver so just use an array of like tool whips or whatever you can get in there so i feel like this it works well and just get in there and just pry it back and then when you can't really pry anymore just get something wider and then do the same thing until the pistons are all the way back in. When the pads are totally out, I just get this themselves and push them back in using that. So I actually had to take this caliper off to get one of the pads through this way because it just, it wasn't budging. And I can see that's been raised there. So it's probably why it wasn't pulling out that way. So we're going to clean all these off. We're going to change the disc first. Now this is going to be on tight because as well the handbrake. So get get a massive hammer don't be scared and just hit each side and it will come off these are the new discs that i've got these are the rears you see how massive they are i have got fronts as well and um, i've never used this company before the company i usually use were like really expensive 
and I found these half the price on eBay but these are sick they've even painted in the middle black uh, proper cool discs okay so I'm not going to fully document doing all this because I've changed pads a thousand times before on the channel um, but I'll clean them up in there and here are the PBS rear ones just going to bang them with some copper grease and bolt them up the most annoying thing about doing brakes is carrying all the tools that you need to do brakes from one brake to the other brake so I've just had a massive pinchy bum time moment with the fronts. I thought the discs um, were the wrong size um, because it, the caliper just was was not going on. But because you've got this hard brake line here, I had to take this off because it was just pushing the caliper and this doesn't bend. So I've had to take this off. I've had one bolt that snapped in there in the process, but it doesn't really matter. But yeah, 350 guys, take this little bracket off, otherwise you'd be fighting with this and you'd be shit scared that you got the wrong disc because there are loads of different disc types for these and I was so annoyed that I thought I got the wrong size. This is one downside to having such massive brakes. Everything's so fucking tight. Ah. Oh my god. I definitely uh, shot myself in the foot and said they're going to be easy because the Brembo's. It's been very fiddly. Fuck. Oh, Jesus. Okay, they're all done. I'm absolutely fing knackered. This is all the shit I needed to do these jobs today. Literally, there's just fucking shit everywhere. I really don't fancy tidying it all up but I'm going to tidy up and have a bit of a wash and then we're going to take it for a drive because we f***ing deserve it and I can't wait so give me, well give me about 10 seconds guys for you Right so we're coming out for a bit of an evening drive because we need to bed these brakes in also make sure the diff is working and everything is tight and whatever I have noticed we've got a fairly bad exhaust blow from underneath the car i have a feeling it's coming from like the cat area uh, and also the handbrake now is like not tight at all so we're gonna have to adjust the handbrake through the discs there's a little bit for a screwdriver and you can come in and i'm pretty sure you can just wind out the shoes just to push you on the bit on the things a bit more so yeah we can get that done that's not a big issue because we do want the handbrake with handbrake entries and handbrake shoes are actually quite good uh handbrakes to be fair um, so that'd be good because we also we also don't want to be constantly clutch kicking the whole time if we can come in a handbrake entry it's uh, it's a lot easier and get a lot a lot more aggressive a lot more quick entries and also it saves your clutch from being like absolutely destroyed very quickly EBS like braking procedure is like nowhere near as like weird as a lot of the other companies I feel like some of the other companies have a bedding procedure which is like almost impossible and I feel like that's just a way to get them out of warranty do you know what I mean but PBS as I've never done a specific bedding in procedure I've just drove normally and just been con you know been con conscious of them and they've lasted great and worked great so it's so much so nice knowing that i've got good brakes on it now again we're just gonna just gonna come down here just so we can do some like slamming on and stuff we're out the way of everyone it's quiet around here just do some nice slamming on and just not slamming on but just some good brake pressure oh fuck it let's 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 use this little bit here to test the day <laughs> Much better, much better. Oh my God, so much better. That exhaust blow is really annoying, but we were gonna get a, uh, we w obviously we we're gonna get an exhaust. Um, I'm not gonna get anything too loud. Um, I don't really like, this, uh, well, I don't really like loud cars to be fair. I like tasteful, like a tasteful amount of noise. So all in all, unbelievable, so much better. The brakes feel amazing and the car just feels so much more consistent and well put together. That diff just made it feel literally absolutely atrocious. So it feels amazing. It feels like a, 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 a consistent, controllable car now. Miles better, I really like this car. Brakes feel fucking great as well. I really, really like this car. I really, really, really do. So, Stay tuned for the next video, guys.